It's a large undertaking running three cars competitively and being ready to go all the time. We only actually put 12 liters in this car. Don't let people fool us. The crash is a part of the racing. It's upsetting because you got to fix the car. It's upsetting because he's losing points. It's upsetting because he made a mistake. This is the fifth race weekend and marks the second half of the series. The championship is back at the Canadian Tire Motorsport Park and with just under 70,000 fans expected, once again, track conditions are perfect. Corner one and two will be fast and dangerous as ever. Bob Trail races in super class and is considered one of the fastest on the track. This season, Bob has experienced two DNFs seriously affecting his point standings. Last year, Bob won two races and was on the podium four times. This is their home track, and as owner of Team G1 Genesis Racing, Bob has high hopes for him and his teammates. Is there any gas in this? No, we haven't any in it. This is our home track. This is the track that I cut my teeth racing cars on, okay? I know the track very well. Um, we're from the Toronto area, okay? So when we're here, we're comfortable. We go fast when we're here. You ready to rock and roll? Bob may not be the fastest driver out there, but he's certainly got one of the best car control out of all the drivers out there. Most people can't control a car when it's on the limit as well as Bob can. You get the special tires on? They're matched? Yeah. So I can hold the outside of four? Yeah. You can nice. pass on the outside of four. Yeah. You can hold it. Okay. I'm going to try it. Bob is also one of those drivers that we like to call fearless. He's He will see an opportunity and he won't even think twice about it. He'll take it whether it's risky or not and deal with the consequences afterwards. Why don't we go out? Okay, follow me. We'll let traffic gap everybody, and then we'll go. If Nickel wants to go, if, if Adet wants to go, uh, let him go. I All think right? you should come out with me if you can. Yeah. And try and just tail me for the first hot lap. Okay. Well, then, why don't why don't you do why don't we do that? But don't let people between us. Yeah, you gotta just move the car. Don't, like crazy. don't let people between us. Okay. And then we'll do one. So we all have to be in the car. Ready to go, everyone ready to go five minutes. I own an operating team, and I'm very happy with our competitive uh, situation we put ourselves into. I'm very happy with the way we are always trying to strive to be better. They're very detail-oriented, and it comes out in the results. We're on track at 8.30. Temperature's down, 17, 18 degrees. The turbo should breathe better and produce more horsepower as opposed to normally aspirated cars. When it gets hot, we lose horsepower. So we're looking for a really strong qualifying effort, okay? We've got new slicks on, okay? Yesterday we were running scrubs, we were running fairly fast on scrubs. The track won't be as sticky. Yesterday they were running till the end of the day where the last session, lots of rubber down, the group, the, the line was sticky, fast, uh, but today, uh, we should be good. We should be uh, in the top uh, three. Humidity is, is not as important as the actual overall temperature, okay? As the temperature goes up, boost goes down because your volume of air is less. The colder the temperature is, the more condensed the air is, the more condensed the air is, the more boost you get. 
that's how it affects the turbo adversely. As opposed to a normally aspirated car, it doesn't affect them as bad. It still works the same way, but not to the same level. We're rocking. Mark, can you grab my bucket? Hey, uh, Sasha, I didn't hear no damn horn yet. We can't roll until we hear a horn. Because one time, two years ago in Indy, we got penalized two laps, which were my best qualifying laps, because we left our pit area for the horn went. And that kind of bit us in the... Uh... Hang on, I'm just going to try to stay with Sasha as best as possible. Yeah. Just stay on his line, go deep like he does. Yeah. We're going to go out as a group. Sasha's going to lead, I'm second, Jonathan's third. We're going to get the tires up to temperature after the first lap. And as soon as uh, Sasha goes, we're going to go. And we go. While trying to pull off a fast lap early, Bob experiences some mechanical issues. We're going to take it back down to the tent, simply review the data, see what's going on. Once we review the data, we'll see what, what's basically going on with the car. It's right now in six. We're not doing too bad. Happening was building too much boost, and the wastegate would let it all go, and then it was it wasn't staying in boost, okay. so it was releasing it all. So I'm not sure why. And they reduced our weight, and my car, because I weigh more than the other drivers, we were trying to run it with a little less fuel to maximize it. But if you get too low, then it, it gets fuel starvation. But we don't know if the, the if if it was turbo cut or fuel starvation. So. It's just, it got screwed up. I mean, that happens, it's racing, it seems this year, in qualifying, it seems to be that problem, you know, where the car's, something's wrong with it, you know? So we just have to make sure it's ready to go for the race. P1 is brought to you by Continental Tire. Let's be clear on something here. That's 20 liters. You stop filling it like at that point. That was what we put in Jonathan's car. We only actually put 12 liters in this car, not even 12 liters. Yeah. You stop filling at this point. No, no. No. I Just told you to dump. Yeah. yeah. Would appear now. Because they changed our requirement for overall weight, and we ran with less fuel because they reduced our weight, that we didn't put enough fuel in the car. Not, we weren't running out, but the car was low enough that we were getting some splash. So we were getting some movement of fuel, and it was basically for a second, just a mere second, starving the car of a little fuel. Going into race one, Bob has more than just mechanical issues to look out for. The guy that I'm right in the heat of battle with is uh, Destalo. Right, Titan points, he's right there. It would appear over the past three events that he has uh, gotten an engine. Last year they were really not competitive and it would appear this year that they've now found another engine builder because their, their engines are back. They're, they've got horsepower again. Lombardi, um, they're an aggressive team, okay? And I've had some issues with them in the past and collisions. And they're not guys to back down either. They're going to go hard. Uh, to Stalo, I had an incident with them two years ago at Three Rivers. 
that situation where he ran right into me and I lost control of the car and I slammed it backwards into a guardrail. What happened is, is they fixed the car for Sunday and one of my crew, uh, not knowing, had um, put a big piece of yellow tape over the affected area, which was quite large, and wrote, thank you Lombardi. And uh, they were all upset about it when they saw it. And then at a driver's meeting, Eric Bastalo came up and asked if we could have a truce. And I told him I think about it. So I did think about it. And I said, absolutely. I don't want to have any more problems. But you never know. Johnny. 6.45, the five minute board comes out. I want to be fully strapped into the car, ready to go here, so we leave here at 6.40, exactly. that car, Bob. This is your chance, man. As Bob weaved his way through the pack, his teammate Sasha was in his own battle for the lead. Coming down Treacherous Corner 2, he lost control, sending him towards the wall. Hey, what's Sasha need? What, what's he need? What's he need? Take the hood off the car! Can't run the car without a hood. Dude, you can't, man. You're gonna destroy the car like this. The car's already I know, but you can't get the crash bar off of it. Coming in last, Sasha and crew desperately fixed the car enough to finish the race for points, while Bob was able to pick off Philip Faye and walk away with second place. You know what I think he got? I think he got caught up in his mirror watching you. Yeah, you know, sure you're here. Ross Bond is kicking around someplace. Where was the oil on the inside or outside? Oh, he went off. Oh, Sasha didn't get touched. At the bottom of two. It was the oil that the, that the Lombardi car yeah, 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 yeah. The oil was That's about what destroyed the car. That's the outside of it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, That's what he did. you got him back out running, though. No, no. He, 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 he comes Sasha. 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 Yeah, yeah, we got him back out running. We brought him in and pulled the shit out of the front box. Guess what number? Sixteen. Not the same guy. Same guy with both you? No, was it? Same car. Same car. I don't know if it's the same driver. Same car. Woo! <laughs> Second place is oh, Bob Trump. Got like yeah, Woo! Woo! I feel like really bad for Sasha. Gets to the bottom of two. Barty Honda, number 60, dumps oil all over the track. He hits it, flies off, boom, front end of the car, done. They get him in the pits, they bend the crap out of the car to get it straight enough to roll, put a new tire on it, and put it back out in the track so we can get some points. Congratulations to our race winner, revving up Jets! P1 is brought to you by Continental Tire. Look 
Looking good, brother. Yesterday, bad situation. I'm coming over two, okay? And all I see is Sasha's car going deep into the bottom of two, hits the tire wall, all kinds of shit happens. The car's in the air, I see parts flying off the car. I radio back to the pits, I say, boys, Sasha just had a huge off in two. It's done. Needless to say, he starts the car back up, he pulls around, they got the hood flapped over the car, it looks like a big, massive pile of shit. But they tied up the thing, they put tape on it, he got him back out, he finished the race. They took it back to the race shop yesterday in Brampton. They worked all night. The car's basically back to new, except for a few major abrasions. Riveted it in, bent it a little bit, riveted it in, and we're all bent together. It's amazing. Well, it helps when you have a team of guys that know the cars very, very, very well, right? You know, you know exactly what's wrong, you know, take off this, take off that, you know. It rained last night. It probably washed a lot of rubber and oil off the track, but they've been racing on the track all day. The conditions of the track right now are gonna be very similar to Friday afternoon practice, which I was reasonably quick in, so I have a really good feeling about this. Today, I'm starting in P2. My strategy is to hold my line going into the first turn and run as smooth a race as possible. I can't scrub speed. Every time I scrub speed, because these guys are gonna have probably a little more horsepower, I'm gonna move backwards. I can't afford to move backwards in this race. It was, uh, racing was my father. My father got us into racing me. My father raced from the time I was born till uh, basically uh, 10 years before he passed away. And um, uh, he, he took me and I, uh, I, I got the disease, that's a disease. And um, it's some of the best times I ever spent with my father were away racing. And I miss him dearly. In fact, um, these are the last set of gloves he used racing um, and I still use them to this day. And I miss him very much. He taught me um, how to be relentless. Never give up, never say die, always. He was as tough as nails, and he was a competitor like no other, and won many, many championships over the years. And um, sometimes he was a tough guy to deal with, but I had all the respect in the world for him, and he made me and developed me into what I am today. Um, it's it's upsetting for so many reasons other than you know worry about getting hit. It's upsetting because you got to fix the car. It's upsetting because he's losing points. It's upsetting because he made a mistake. You know, it's it's there's a whole myriad of reasons why. Marco, can you take this without this guy going nowhere fast? Two, Bob was ahead of the pack. He moved into P1 and held it for two laps while Sasha moved his way through the crowd. Bob's in first place, but he's got the yellow BMW very tight on his, on his back. Fortunately for us, Sasha's up in third place, so he can start putting some pressure onto the BMW, and hopefully he'll get lost in his mirrors, and we'll, Sasha can get by him, and then it's smooth sailing for Bob and Sasha. Outstanding display of racing. Sasha going from dead last, closed the gap and stole P1 from Bob. 
Bob's in second place, but most importantly, Sasha, we put the car together all last night. Ton of time, 10 hours total labor. And he came back to win first place. Full driver's zero. Awesome job. We couldn't ask for more as, as a team. Man, it's so good. It's so good. Getting a little squirmy out there, eh, Bobby? You just want everybody. Great, Bob. Well done, Mike. He wouldn't even let you have this one from the back. Like, isn't that his job? I saw the green machine coming. He ate, gobbled me up. Although, Marco, I made him work for it. I made him pass on the outside of eight. Yeah, it's true. Hey, you like how I made you pass me? On the outside of eight. Good running, man. That was awesome. Good job, SG. I was like in tears. First to last, buddy. First to last. All that work was worth it. Back to back podiums. Awesome. I haven't had back to back podiums since last year. Two seconds. I'm ecstatic. Having this in our home track at Mosport is a, is a huge, huge win for me. And Sasha winning today after his horrific crash yesterday and being able to repair the car. The boys, six guys, spent 20 hours fixing that car and repairing it and they did an amazing job. He went from last place in our class to first. He passed me on like the third last lap. We were kind of hoping you were going to be the one that was sitting first. That would have uh, been awesome. Sasha came up, I held him off for two laps. <laughs> he tried, and then he I made him pass me on the outside of eight. <laughs> That's how Nickel got this doll. Yeah? He drove on the outside of him. Well, I better go over there and wear this, weigh this pig. I mean, this legal egg. Moving forward, getting the car set up to go to Three Rivers. Um, Three Rivers is, is always a great time, real tight track. Um, it's, it's, it's a real show, and the Quebec fans are the most enthusiastic automotive race racing fans anywhere. We're gonna try to put all three cars in the put in there, and it's gonna be tough, because everybody's gonna be out, guns fully loaded, ready to go. So, uh, I'm looking forward to it, and um, the battle starts again.